Hey guys, Steve here with Auto Hitch and Auto360, but of course, as you can tell by the title, we're not actually doing anything in automotive today. We're gonna to do something for boat owners on behalf of Boattential.com. Now, real quick, what is Boattential.com? It's actually a listing site, a local listing site down here in South Florida, even though no websites are really local. But it was started down here in South Florida by a friend of mine about a year and a half, two years ago, right around the time he started a family, and he just got too busy with it. So he asked me, can we get some content on there? We know a lot of stuff about boats. Can we get some stuff on there and, and start helping people and maybe drive a little bit of traffic? I said, sure, man, let's go ahead and, and let's do that. So what I wanted to do, actually today was a great opportunity. I've been selling some chains. I've been selling some locks and stuff that I had from my time selling boats actually as a small dealer. And I, I had this stuff online and all of a sudden this week I was getting phone calls and text messages about it. So I figured, wow, this is a great time along with the website, along with everything else to probably address that need that many people have. I went on YouTube and I saw, man, there's really not a lot of people who know what the heck they're talking about. And the reason why I think I can shed something interesting on this is because like you guys who probably have it on the side of your house or have a boat in front of your house on a trailer, I didn't have a big wall with barbed wire and all this stuff that most boat dealers have, okay? What I had was an open lot, just like your driveway, where anybody could walk up at any time of the night. I had to figure a way to make it more difficult than someone else. Not so that I could stop them, because you can't. You can't stop a criminal, and if you take anything away from this today, it's that nothing we're gonna discuss is ever gonna stop anyone who really, really wants it. All you can do is intimidate them to move on down the road or make it so difficult that it takes them long enough that they just say, you know what, this is becoming too risky, I'll come back another time or now I'm going to move on to someone else. But if they want to sit there, if they don't, if they're like Joe Pesci in Casino who doesn't give an F about jail, okay, they're going to sit there and they're going to do what they need to. They're going to grind through whatever tools we talk about today. So let's kick this off. Let's get this over as soon as we can, but also giving you as much information as we can. Let's start it off. So a little preface on where all of this came from and why I have all of these different things, okay? First of all, we had one big boat, 31-foot Ocean Master from like 1981 or something that almost got stolen. If they had stolen the truck that could handle the weight of that boat, they would have gotten away with it. Then we actually had a boat that was really stolen, and that was because we had all of this stuff and forgot to put it on. So that's usually going to make it harder. So whatever you buy from today or whatever you end up buying, maybe none of which I show you, you have to put it on the boat for it to work. That's the one rule, okay? Right after realizing you can't stop criminals is whatever you buy, it works better when it's not sitting in the garage floor and it's actually on the trailer or on the boat, okay? So let's start with, what do we want to start with today? Tongue locks. Probably the most important thing or the most popular item is tongue locks. Why? Because it's easy, right? You got the chains, they got to go through a rim and around the frame and all that stuff, and we'll get into that. But the tongue locks, man, they're popular. You could pick them up at the store, you could pick them up at Pep Boys, you could pick them up at, at any automotive store, Walmart, whatever, they're relatively cheap. But you've probably never seen one like this, okay? Because this is the only one that really does anything worth a damn. This is made by Proven Industries, okay? Let me show you that here, Proven Industries. And I got this probably a year ago. And you got a puck lock here, okay? You know the trailer, you guys know how this works. You stick that in, and this is actually upside down, but this is easier way for me to do it, all right? And then you would slide this over, fits in the grooves here, it lines up where you would lock. You have the cylinder goes inside here. Okay. Upside down. And then you would just pop that in, turn the key, and it's locked. Now, what do I like about that? That thing is solid as hell. It ain't going anywhere with a crowbar or any other way that people normally pop those off, okay? Like the ones you get at AutoZone or the ones you get anywhere else, those are garbage. Never touch those, okay? These are the kind you want. These are solid. These aren't going anywhere. However, <laughs> I can't necessarily say that they're going to stand up to everything and that they don't really have any weak point, okay? When I look at chains and locks that I have, I notice that its weakest point is really strong for me. Like, I'm confident 
in the weakest point of a chain in the lock, the ones that I have anyway. Because you have to remember, any safety measure, any security measure always has a weakest point. That's what you want to identify because that is as strong as what you're using. And if your weakest point is super weak, nothing else should do and even matters, okay? What's the weakest point of this? This hockey puck is the weakest point. I don't know if you can hear that. That's aluminum, okay? That's metal. This is aluminum. You drill right through that thing in no time, all right? Now, you could probably get, it's almost gonna roll off the table. You could probably get an Abus lock like this, okay? This thing is hefty. You can get an Abus lock that's actually a puck lock. They make one, but I think it's like 80 or $90. Now that thing right there was about two something, two and change. You're gonna spend over $300 for a tongue lock. For that price, you can get a couple of good chains and a couple of good locks that are gonna go farther for you in actually keeping someone from stealing your boat than I believe the tongue lock will. Why? Okay, because the chain's in front of the trailer. Now, these are designed so that you could put the chains in here. And I didn't always do that, you know? And sometimes the chains are too big and they don't fit in here. If you have a big boat or a big trailer, just big chains, they're not gonna fit in here. And if you can't keep the chains away, then what good is having a tongue lock? Now I did have another one that was pretty good. It was called, uh, I think like a gator lock or gator tongue lock or something like that. I'll try to link to it if I can find it. But it was a big, long red box. They might have made it a different color and had like gator teeth design on and everything. But it also had a flaw. And that was that the part where the locking mechanism went couldn't fit the locks that I like to use. Okay? It only fit, and I actually have the lock right here. It only fit this lock. Now, which one would I rather use if I own both? I didn't want to use this one, okay? This is an FJM Security Products, and this is a lace lead. This is from West Tech Rigging, which is where I got a lot of my chains and locks. Um, that thing can get run over by a tank. This, I, I don't know what this thing's gonna do, okay? I got this off Amazon. Now granted, it had the best reviews out of anything, but uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I can trust it for. And the problem was, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I can hit this thing with a sledgehammer a couple times and knock it right off. And to me, again, the weakest point of my security measure, if it's weak enough, that means nothing else matters. Whether I can stuff the chains in, whether I can do anything, I don't care. None of that matters. So I personally don't like the tongue locks and I've bought the best, you know, just to kind of make a point out of it, to test it out and also to share that with you. I wouldn't personally invest in it, but you know what, maybe you have a trailer that has weird wheels and you can't fit chains through it, or maybe there's a reason why that's all you have access to. And if that's the case, check out that Gator Tongue Lock or check out this here made again by Proven Industries. If that's all you can do, or if that's really what you prefer, those are the best ones, okay? And those are gonna keep people from at least crowbarring and cutting and doing that kind of stuff, all right? Um, Moving on now to what I actually do love, absolutely love, are the chains and the locks. Now let's address the chain. I got this from West Tech Rigging, okay? WestTechRigging.com, I believe, is the website. Again, I'll link to that for you guys to help you out. I'm not making any affiliate stuff off of this, so I honestly just like their product. Here's what you wanna look for when you look for a chain, okay? Number one, the shape. You see how that's square? Now you may be, I can't get close enough, I don't have the autofocus on. But the chain is square, okay? Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it very, very difficult for someone with bolt cutters. And you can't get cut through these anyway with bolt cutters, but the point is it's gonna make it difficult for someone with bolt cutters to even get a good grip on that, okay? But let's say they do. Let's say they get a good grip on it. What's the second reason why I love these chains? The hardness of the metal. Now, I don't have the number on top of my head, and I didn't look it up, I'll be honest with you, but the, the metal in these, is actually harder than the metal on bolt cutters. So what happens is when that metal touches this metal, that metal is the one that falls apart, cracks, and breaks. This metal is fine. And that's just a chemistry thing. That's just science. So make sure that you find chains that are square to make it hard to cut in the first place. And number two, they have a hardness rating higher than the metal on most bolt cutters, which isn't really that difficult to do, okay? But you just, 
that's the important part. If not, you're just wasting your money on whatever chain you buy. But again, West Tech rigging, everything they got for their security chains is great. So you can't fault, you can't, you can't go wrong there. Okay. Um, size, I believe this is a three eighths. Okay. And I got this, yeah, I think this is a three eighths. It actually might be the, it, it might be the half inch. Um, you want to make sure that it, it doesn't really matter. I think, I think they're all good. Okay. The thicker obviously means just the longer to cut. So if you're in an area where you're really, really insecure, um, you want to get the thickest possible because you want, you know, three chains there and you want to make them sit there for 30 minutes, even grinding these things off. But if you're in front of your house, th the thinnest chain they have is fine because that's going to be really hard to cut through even with a grinder. It's going to make a lot of noise and a lot of sparks. And if they got to do it two or three times, they're not going to do it. They're going to dip. Okay. Um, but those are the chains I like. Those are the chains you definitely need to get. And again, I recommend at least two. Okay. If you're going to make something that's difficult, you're going to make something difficult, make it, make them think about doing it two or three times over to succeed because then that just makes the task even more unbearable for them. And they just, ah, screw this man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not even going to try it. Kind of like what happened here with this New York lock uh, of the model, I believe is kryptonite. Okay. Now we had to cut this. This is our cut. Okay. We had to do this. And what happened was they drilled through the cylinder here. Okay. Where the key was. Now you're probably thinking, oh, no, they got you, right? Well, no, the reason I know they didn't get me is because I had to cut the lock off. All they did was destroy the key mechanism. They never got the lock off. And the other funny part was, and I got, I had all this on camera. The other funny part was, is because I had three more chains and locks on that boat. <laughs> they just gave up, man, because they start drilling through that. And I don't know how much time they spent on it. Really, if, uh, if I remember correctly, it was probably about a, a minute drilling through this thing or trying to drill through this thing. What happens is, is they, like I said, they get to the point where they, they look around and they go, okay, this already isn't working. And I got to do this three or four more times. And the beautiful part about it is, is I don't have the same lock on every chain. I don't even have the same chain on every lock. So they are having a hard enough time figuring out one thing. That's not necessarily what they have to do for the next three or four. And that's key too. If you do get two or three things, don't get two or three of the same one. You could probably do it and be fine. But what I like to do is mix it up. So in that case, when I'm stumping them with this and they look over and see three other different locks, it's like, oh man, <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna worry about this. These guys are nuts. Okay. I'm out of here. Um, so that's what I do. Now let me show you some locks real quick. Okay. This is a lace lead. Uh, this is uh, your Vero. This is going to be for your smaller chains. Okay. As you can see by the space here, this is going to be for your bigger. Um, the point of these obviously, excuse me, is to shield. Okay. Is to shield this cylinder here so that if they want to attack the lock, yeah, they can try to do that with a key and everything, but they're not going to be able to attack the lock, the body of the lock itself, because you have the thickest parts exposed. The thinnest parts right here are all covered by the chain. They can't even get to them. So that's why I love these locks. Okay. A little bit more complicated to put the things in. You have to hold it steady while you push the thing in. It's a, it's a Bia, but you know, it's worth it in the end. Believe me. Then you have, yeah, of course, then you have the Abus. Okay. I love these Abuses, man. I got these actually because another lock that failed. Um, and it, the guys at the, the locksmith felt really bad. So they got, they got me a bunch of these for free from the Abus rep and man, I'm going to rep these myself. These are excellent and they're nice and shiny looking, but see on top of that, it, it shows people, you know, glares in the light when they drive by during the daytime, scoping you out says, Hey man, I got, I got locks. I got locks on this thing and these are high quality. And anybody who's a crook probably knows what these are. Okay. Those are going to stand up to anything. And again, this is just another way of doing a shield. All right. Um, and it makes it hard to get in there and cut, man. You can't get in there with a blade because it, once you have your chain going, your chains going through here. Okay. You can't get anything in here. It, it's got this cut off. So that's what these are good for. Okay. Shield that. Now let me talk about the bad guys. Medico, you may have heard of them. You may not have. Okay. They actually do a lot of, I think security software stuff too. So they're not actually just hardware security, amazing cylinders. 
some of the best in the world, okay? But this, this, this was sold to me as by them. I, I don't blame my, um, I don't blame my, my guys um, at the uh, locksmith shop because they only know what they're told, okay? And you go on the website for, um, for Medico, and they got a little symbol there with the bolt cutters and a line through them, like no smoking. Like oh, you can't do this with bolt cutters. Guess what? It took a guy with a pair of bolt cutters this long all of about 10 seconds to get through one of these locks. And that's how they were able to steal my boat because even though we forgot everything else, we had one of these on a gate. It was actually parked on the side of the building. We had one of these on a gate. And if it would have stood up for a little bit, maybe after all the other crap, because it's the same guys that cut through this one and left the other boats, okay, they were, they were lucky enough to go around the back of the building and find that we had missed that. Uh, missed some opportunities on that other one. If this thing had held up, it probably would have kept the boat there. Um, and I mentioned that to the company, and here's the sad part. Uh, they told me to uh, stuff it and just shove off, um, using a nautical term there. And that was upsetting because these things don't cost them that much money. And I didn't ask them you know, to pay for a boat. I didn't ask them for paying half the boat. I didn't do anything. All I said was, hey, man, can I get my money back for the four locks that I bought from you that were beat in about 15 seconds? And, uh, yeah, they just ignored me. They just literally ignored me, and I, I thought I was being very fair. Just wanted my money back for the locks, um, and they wouldn't do that. So as good as these cylinders are, um, if the company, Medico, does not stand behind any of their stuff, don't. what's it good for? Don't buy it. Don't buy their software. Don't buy their hardware. Don't buy this, okay, because they shafted me. They will shaft you. Um, and as you can tell, I stopped smiling when I was talking about these guys because they're pretty upsetting. Now, if you want to go for something a little bit cheaper, okay, Stanley. Stanley's your winner. Stan's your man. Um, these are running for about 50, 60 bucks. I got it off Amazon. And uh, uh, where are the keys? These are actually the keys right here. Okay. Um, you know, nothing special, but they shroud. Okay. They shroud your lock, which is a good thing. And the other thing I like about them is they have the twisting uh, cylinder head down here, the cylinder cap. Okay. Which makes it very, very difficult, if not prevents drilling because it keeps the drill from um, getting any bite, okay? So they're not gonna be able to drill out your keyhole. Now, yeah, if someone's good with picking locks, they're gonna be able to pick it much easier than any one of these other ones, but the average person, they're, they're not an expert at that. Excuse me, they're gonna try to cut and drill, and this is gonna help you out big time there. Um, so for 50, 60 bucks, pretty good darn deal, pretty good darn deal altogether. Um, all right, so that, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, as far as the preventative stuff, lubricant, I mean, I have T9. I like this stuff. I use it on, uh, you can actually use this on electronics, too, uh, to keep corrosion issues. Uh, don't spray wet while they're on, obviously, but if you spray while they're off, let it sit for a while. It's actually made by Boeing. It's made for electronics. And um, another thing, I actually have two of these I'm selling, but uh, these are the last resort. <laughs> if they get through all your security measures, uh, you want to know where the boat goes. I got these for, I don't even know what they have now. I got these about, probably about a year and a half ago too. Um, these are Spot, uh, spot Trace uh, satellite. And this was 99 bucks and then I service I think was another 99 bucks for like a year. And you can do active tracing, two minute intervals, five minute intervals, obviously different costs. But if for whatever reason they get through your stuff, it's always at least good to know where the boat is. And you can just go get it. It's an all in all package and I would definitely recommend, you know, get that. Your, your boat, our boats are investments, you know? So um, keep people from getting them if you can. If they do get them, get them back. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. So if you have anything, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you like something you saw, give us a thumbs up. Um, if there's something we left out, leave that in the comments. Um, if there's something you didn't like, you can thumb down or you can leave that in the comments too, and I'm sure you will. But uh, I definitely wanna know if I skipped anything, if I missed anything, and um, if there's anything we can do better, if there's any other topics based on uh, boat security you guys wanna touch on, maybe we'll make a video out of it. Um, I would say subscribe, but I just wanna be fair and, and let you all know that probably not gonna get to anything marine in the very, very near future on a consistent basis that I feel is worthy of your subscription. Um, just because I'm really focused on the auto hitch automotive stuff right now. 
Um, but if you want to subscribe so that you get alerted when we do start doing that stuff down the road, hey, by all means, um, please do. I'd love to have you guys as a, uh, as a subscriber. And of course, if you subscribe to the i360 channel, we're going to get some videos and some stuff like that, Marine stuff, which is cool too. It's not really educational, but it's really cool stuff to watch. We do the 360s. We just do regular video. There's a lot of neat stuff we do on there. So again, guys, uh, hope I was able to help out. Hope I was able to help you keep your boat safe uh, all year round. And I look forward to seeing you guys again. Have a good one.